Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to be going over seven writing habits to keep you going. And as always, stay tuned to the end because I have a bonus tip that I think you're going to really like. And chances are, if you're watching this, you're in the middle of writing a book or you're thinking about writing a book really soon. I'm going to tell you some important things that you really need to know first before I get into those seven habits. See, the thing that you need to know is that you are brave. And in case you haven't heard it in a while, you are awesome. And you got this. Why are you brave? Writing is a task. It's a task that takes a lot of time. Maybe you've told people that you were going to write a book and they kind of gave you a look like, oh, that's good. But really, you knew that they didn't really believe that you could write it. Or maybe you didn't tell anyone because you were afraid of what they might say. Either way, you are still brave because you're willing to attempt something that most people are too afraid to even try. You already won because you're willing to take the jump. And that's what makes you brave that makes you awesome and i know that you got this on this channel we talk about all things writing and screenwriting so if that's something that interests you make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and make sure to turn the notification bells on that way you're hit up every time i post a new video so let's get right into the seven habits you can use any combination of these habits to help you finish your manuscript they work really well on the first drafts, especially if you're doing something like NaNoWriMo and you're kind of in a time crunch. So if that sounds like you, somebody who doesn't have a lot of time, but they want to make sure that they finish the draft, make sure that they get the book done, these habits are for you. And just a reminder that there are countless ways to get the draft done. Anything I deliver to you on this channel are just some ways that can help you out. The first thing that I highly recommend is that you know your pace. You should time yourself when you sit down to write for a full session and see how much words you actually deliver during that time. You want to do this a few times so you can get a good average. I would say that you're going to have a good average after about 30 days. So if you're participating in NaNoWriMo and you maybe want to continue writing in the future, I would suggest that you time your sessions and keep track in a journal of how many words that you wrote per session. How many words you can write per session almost has zero correlation with how fast you can type. So if you can type a lot of words per minute, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a lot done because you have to factor in how you think about the story. And the more you write, the easier it will be for you to put those words out on the page. A lot of people will try to make these rough calculations because they know their typing speed, but I highly recommend that you don't do this because it's almost always going to be incorrect. You actually have to time yourself doing a narrative writing session. And that leads me to my next tip. If you want to make sure you don't get distracted, of course you have to turn off your technology and social media, but in addition to this, you may want to have an adjacent notebook. See, in this notebook, you're going to write down things that pop in your head that you might have to do or get back to at a later time. If you're going to make dinner, if you're going to run an errand and you just remember that, you just want to write that down off to the side and keep pushing through your manuscript. Don't actually stop and use your writing time to do other things. The next tip kind of piggybacks off of the second one. And that's you want to skip research. Don't research while you're writing. Research outside of your writing time and keep that writing time sacred. If you have something that you're kind of confused on, say for instance, there's a doctor in your story and there's some medical jargon that needs to take place and you want to look it up, just do what Shonda Rhimes does for Grey's Anatomy. She writes medical, medical, medical. Anytime they have to keep pushing through uh, the story, they can go back and insert the things that they need for the medical jargon. Those things don't affect the story as much, so it's easy to skip those. If you're having an epic fantasy or something with magic, you can simply write magic, 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 and just keep going. This works for really anything. Placeholders are key. Don't stop to research. Just keep writing the manuscript. This one is for the people who are really busy. You want to reclaim your time. Now, this can mean something different for each individual. 
So I've seen it done in a few ways. I'm just gonna go over those now and maybe it can kind of get your brain going for where you can reclaim time in your life. Now, when I say reclaim time, what I mean is actually look for pockets of time throughout your day so that you can write and keep that for writing time. Now, sometimes you won't have any time to write. So you might have to figure out a way to write while you're doing other tasks. Now, that's where dictation can come in. I'll get to that later. But even if you're not using dictation, you can find little pockets of time. I know some very prolific writers who actually write in their car while they're waiting for their kids to come for the pickup line at school. Now that can be five, 10, 15 minutes, but that little bit of time does make a big difference if you're consistent with it. The most common way to reclaim time is waking up early or going to bed late and using those times to write when no one is gonna really bother you. There's all kinds of legendary stories of authors waking up really early to write, doing it day after day until they actually finish the manuscript. Find what works for you, but don't be afraid to write even if it's for five minutes. Those five minute increments definitely add up. I've seen people write on stationary bikes because they didn't wanna miss a workout. I've seen people write on the subway. I know when I first started writing, I would sometimes write in the break room at work. There were even times where I wrote while waiting in line for a nightclub. Sometimes I would write while I was waiting in line at a movie theater. It's kind of crazy the places that you can write just on your phone, transmit the text to the Word doc, and you're good. All of those time pockets will help you get the job done. Okay, so this next tip is about sprints. You may have heard that there's a lot of scientific evidence that says we can't concentrate for longer than 45 minutes. Whether or not you believe that, what I recommend is doing sprints between five and 20 minutes because five and 20 minutes is a really good amount of time that almost anyone can sit down and focus for. So if you can do five to 20 minutes for your sprints and time yourself, you're gonna find that those start to add up as well. Having several sprints throughout the day is really all you need to hit your word counts. For my next tip, I recommend that if you don't use an outline, or even if you do use an outline, never end your writing session cold. Always write a few notes about what's happening next because your mind is already going and you don't wanna lose that momentum. So write a few notes about where you see the story going next, what you see happening in the next scenes, any details that will jumpstart you when you come back to the manuscript for your next writing session. I'm gonna give the seven tip now, but I just remembered my favorite one. So that's gonna be right after, it's gonna be the bonus tip. Okay, so dictation. I really have to advocate for dictation because when I first started writing books, I didn't even know how to touch type. And dictation was something that actually helped me bridge that gap. And I didn't have to learn the new skill of typing in an expedited way. Now, eventually after I wrote a couple books, I was able to type very proficiently, but I still use dictation because I simply cannot match the speed with typing. And I think most people will experience this too. I'll give you an example. So feature length screenplays are roughly 20,000 words. They can be give or take a couple thousand. It used to take me a few weeks to write a feature length screenplay. The last screenplay that I wrote was a, again, a feature length screenplay. I wrote it in two days. That's because I did 10,000 words on each day. And I did that through using dictation. If I didn't use dictation, there's no way I would be able to do 10,000 words a day. Now, I don't believe that that's my average, my new average by any means, but with dictation, who knows? What I can tell you is that it's not uncommon for people to write 1,500 words in about 20 minutes using dictation. That's actually a very good estimate. So if you're thinking about NaNoWriMo, I believe it's 1666 or something, as far as the words you need to write per day. Well, imagine only having to write about 20 minutes per day to hit your NaNoWriMo mark. Sounds pretty good, right? Give it a try, maybe it's not for you, but 
I think everyone should at least give it a good go at dictation. Okay, so this is the bonus tip, but I think it actually might be the biggest tip. All you want to do is get really good, really tenacious at sitting down during your writing time and opening the Word doc and then typing one word. If you are consistent at that, you'll find that you'll end up writing much more than one word. But a lot of times, we can't even get ourselves to sit down in front of the computer or whatever we're writing on and get the first word down. So don't think about it as such a big thing. Don't think about having to write 2,000 words in a day. Just think about writing one word. Focusing on writing that one word is all you need to do and give yourself grace. If you block out your time to write and you sit down and you write only one word during that time, you need to be happy with that. You need to be proud of yourself. Why? Because you're building the habit, you're building the muscle, and you're coming back to it every single day. I guarantee you will not sit down and write one word and just sit there for the entire time, come back the next day, do it again, come back the next day, do it again. Eventually, you're gonna start putting up a lot of words, but you have to focus really intensely on that first step of sitting down and just getting one word on the page. Knowing these writing habits is a great start, but to really amp your writing speed, you're gonna wanna know more about story structure. I'm gonna show you how to do that in the video on screen now.